Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, an other aspect of temperature change in reactors that we didn't talk about so much when we considered how we could use the Van't Hoff equation to adjust the temperature of a reaction. And uh, this was lurking there, but we didn't really examine it. So recall the Van't Hoff equation tells us that we can adjust the delta G for a given reaction to uh, account for a temperature being different than 298 by integrating between our reference temperature and the reaction temperature, uh, the delta H associated with that reaction, and then adding that to the uh, reference delta G over RT. So that's, that's that picture, that seems reasonable. And what I wanna mention today is that that equation is somewhat straightforward and easy to solve if our reactor may be considered isothermal, right? So if we've got an isothermal reaction, then we just know what reaction temperature is gonna be. We integrate from reference to reaction. End of story, we know what our delta G is. We can solve for K, we can solve for compositions. Another model of reactor that we commonly encounter, however, is the adiabatic reactor. Remember, adiabatic exchanges no heat with the outside. So that means the temperature is gonna change as the reaction proceeds. And this is a little tricky to work out, right? Because it means that Van't Hoff equation, we don't have a T we can plug in. So I'm gonna tell you how this works. We have a, a reaction K, the equilibrium comp uh, constant, which we use to find C. We use that C to solve the reaction energy balance. And that reaction energy balance allows us to calculate uh, how much heat would have been released, which allows us to get an estimate of our temperature change. And then knowing that temperature change, we can uh, use the Van't Hoff equation to adjust our delta G for that temperature that we have just estimated. Um, and then we can feed that delta G back into the equation for K. And we iterate, we go around and around and around in a circle in steps until we get this to settle down to have one value of C and one value of temperature that uh, encapsulates the temperature change over the course of the reaction. So that's the idea. And you can do this by hand, but uh, why would you? This is a, a reason we have computers you can nicely set up a little thing in uh, MATLAB to uh, write this up, or you can take advantage of the fact that this has already been written into HiSys. So we can use HiSys's uh, approach to solve this kind of question for us. And this uh, iteration that I'm, I illustrated here is exactly what something like HiSys or Aspen will do with an adiabatic reactor. So our problem of the day today that I want you to work on when you get your hands uh, on HiSys is I want you to try uh, to calculate adiabatic uh, temperature rise for a reactor that is running the uh, steam reformation of methane. Now you will recall that at, uh, at low temperatures, this reaction um, proceeds in the opposite direction. So make sure you pick a initial starting temperature, right? Like even an adiabatic reactor has a starting temperature. So give it a starting temperature where you are reasonably confident that the reaction will proceed in the forward direction. And then uh, ask HiSys to let that go and see what the adiabatic temperature change is there. This will almost certainly require some negotiation with our process modeling software. This is the case. Remember, it's a game, not a calculator. Um, after you've successfully converged that, let's have a discussion about what do you find happens. Does the temperature go up? Does the temperature go down? Um, does the reaction proceed uh, very as far in the forward direction as it would when it was isothermal? Or does uh, do you get less products than you would otherwise expect? I think we're gonna get less products, but that's just an estimate. Um, by contrast, I want you to look at a reaction that is super duper favorable, which is we're going to just burn that methane. Um, and if you feed that reaction into an adiabatic reactor in HiSys, what kind of temperature uh, change do you get? So 
Run both of those things, compare and contrast, and we'll have a discussion of that in class.